Back in 2017, I booked a role on the Netflix show Insatiable. I played Herman Choi on six episodes between season one and season two. Now later that same year, I booked a role on the Netflix show The Haunting of Hill House, where I played Hugh Crane's attorney in episode one. Then two years later, I booked a role in the Netflix movie that has yet to be released, so I can't tell you what it's called or what it's about, but it should be coming out sometime in 2020. In this video, I want to share with you how I audition for those Netflix shows and movies and what steps you can take to put yourself in the best position to audition for and book Netflix projects. Let's get started. What's up, my fellow actors? Welcome to the Acting Career Center, here to help you learn the skills you need to break into the film and television industry. My name is Kurt Yu. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If this is your first time here, you definitely want to subscribe to this channel to get more videos on acting, auditioning, and career advice every single week. Today we're going to be talking about how to audition for Netflix projects. Netflix is so popular these days. There are so many cool shows on Netflix that I love, including Stranger Things and Ozark. So before we get started, why don't you let me know down in the comments what your favorite Netflix show is. All right, let's talk about auditioning for Netflix. Obviously not all auditions are the same. Whenever we compare auditions, there are gonna be some similarities and some differences. So let's take for example, the three Netflix projects that I worked on. What were some of the similarities between those three auditions? Well, the audition process was generally the same for all three. The casting director sent character breakdowns to my agent. My agent found a role that I fit and sent my headshot to the casting director. The casting director then requested an audition from me. I did my audition and then eventually they booked me for the role. So that's kind of a high level of how all three of those auditions worked. Now there were some some differences in the details which we will talk about later but overall all three of those auditions were very similar another thing that all three of these auditions had in common was that all of these particular Netflix projects were filmed in Atlanta now why is that important well I live in Atlanta and that gives me an advantage anytime projects are filmed right here in this city now not every Netflix show is made here in Atlanta but a lot of the popular ones are, including Stranger Things, Ozark, Sweet Magnolias, Dolly Parton's Heartstrings, and of course, Insatiable and The Haunting of Hill House. And one final thing that all three of these auditions had in common was they all came through my agent. As far as I know, none of these auditions were available to the public. So every single actor who auditioned for one of these parts all had to get it through their representation. Okay, so those were some of the similarities. What were some of the differences between the three auditions? Well, as I mentioned earlier, the overall process of the auditions were very similar, but there were some differences. One, my insatiable audition was in person in the casting director's office. The other two auditions were self-taped. Second, my Haunting of Hill House audition, which was self-taped, did not have a callback. It was booked directly off of the tape. The other two auditions both had in-person callbacks before I booked them. Another difference between the three auditions is how long each audition process was. Insatiable, for example. My first audition for Insatiable was on September 20th. My callback was on September 26th, and then I found out I booked it on September 29th. That's a total of nine days between my first audition and when I booked it. The Haunting of Hill House, my audition was on September 17th. There was no callback for this, and then I found out I booked it on October 5th. That's a total of 18 days between my first audition and when I booked it. That's twice as long as the process for Insatiable. And then this project that I can't tell you the name of, my first audition was on April 2nd. My callback was on April 9th. And then I found out I booked it on April 29th. That's a total of 27 days between first audition and when I finally booked it. That's, a, that's three times as long as the process for insatiable so this is actually very common within the industry a lot of people ask the question after I audition how long will it take for me to find out whether I booked it or not well there's no great answer for that as you saw sometimes it's nine days
day. Sometimes it's 18. Sometimes it's 29, 27. Sometimes it's over 30. You never know. So these three auditions, they're a great example of how long these processes can take. All right, I think this is a good time to remind you that if you're interested in learning my 10-step audition preparation process that has helped me book over 50 movies and television shows, including these three Netflix projects, then I've created a free audition cheat sheet that you can download right now by clicking that link right up there. All right, enough about me. Let's talk about you. What are some of the steps that you can take to put yourself in the best position to audition for and start booking Netflix projects? The first thing you want to do is research the show that you want to audition for, specifically its location. Where geographically does that show film? This is such an important question because you gotta know where the action is. Let's say I was a wildlife photographer and I wanted to take a picture of a giraffe in the wild. Do I just grab my camera and look out my bedroom window and just wait for a giraffe to walk by? No, I would be waiting by the window for the rest of my life because there are no giraffes that live where I live. I would have to go on Google and search where do giraffes live and Google will tell me where to go to take that picture. So let's get back to auditioning for Netflix. Let's say you want to audition for Stranger Things. Well, you would go on Google and search where does Stranger Things film and you would find out that Stranger Things films in Atlanta. That means that people that live in or near Atlanta have more opportunities to audition for that show. This applies to any project, not just Netflix projects. If you want to audition for a particular show, you're going to find it easier to get those opportunities when you live in the city where that show films. This is why so many actors move to Los Angeles and move to New York and move to Atlanta because these three cities have the most film and television production in the world right now. At this point, a lot of people will ask me, is it still possible to get those audition opportunities without living in those cities? And my answer always is, yes, it's possible, but it's just going to be a lot harder. And the farther you live away from those cities, the harder it's going to be. So if you live in another country or if you live overseas and you're trying to audition for something in the United States, man, it's going to be tough. It's going to be really tough unless you're already an established actor. I know this is going to be hard for some of you to hear because you probably live in a city that doesn't have a lot of film and TV opportunities and there are no talent agencies there that can get you those auditions. And that's really hard. Trust me, I get it. I used to live in Ohio and I didn't get any of those opportunities either. I had to move and moving is a risk. It is. But I had to take that risk in order to get those opportunities that I wanted. Before moving to Atlanta, I had never auditioned for a single Netflix project in my life. And then three years after moving here, I had not only auditioned for, but worked on three Netflix projects. So that proves how important it is to live in the city where a lot of production is taking place. Another question to ask if you're trying to audition for a Netflix show is how will you get access to those auditions? Now, Netflix projects, along with all other major studio projects, will 99% of the time they will go through talent agencies to audition their actors. That means that if you want to get auditions for those projects, you will almost always need to have representation in order to get those opportunities. Like I mentioned before, the three Netflix projects that I worked on, all three of those auditions came through my agent in Atlanta. If you currently don't have an agent and you're wondering how to get an agent, well, the first step is to make sure that you're taking acting classes. If a talent agent is going to sign you, they want to see that you are serious about your career. And one way to show them that you are serious about your acting career is to be taking acting classes. The next thing that you'll need to submit to an agent is a professional headshot. Now, this isn't a selfie that you take with your phone or a picture that you ask your friend with a fancy camera to take. This is a professional headshot that needs to be taken by a professional headshot photographer. Yes, this is going to cost some money, but you got to look at it as an investment into your career. And it's another thing that will show talent agents that you are serious about this as your career. Take a look at these actor headshots. You need to look as good or better than these to compete with other professional actors. 
Now, if you have headshots that look this good and you've been taking acting classes and improving your craft, well, then it's going to be harder for talent agencies to ignore you and you're going to start standing out from the crowd. All right, those were some of my tips for auditioning for Netflix projects. And honestly, they apply to any film and television project that you want to be a part of. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment down below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Until next time, keep practicing, keep learning, and I hope to see you on set one day, on a Netflix set one day.